Boopy. A GMC. <laughs> Get more chicks. That's what it stands for. I think it's an Envoy. Just got dropped off from another shop. Appears to be the 2007 model. And apparently, uh, the guy's uh, customer parked it in their uh, garage. And it sat for about a month. And then they went to start it. And this is where they're at. Oh. We got an engine light, a flashing traction light, a reduced power light. No throttle. Uh, but evidently when they parked it, it ran fine. So I'm thinking mouse. It's got a dead mess. Completely skipping like crazy. Well, idle her in the shop here. Come on, baby. There she goes. We made it. I guess we better get a scan tool on it first and see what in the thunder the computer's seeing. I figured before we get too carried away, folks, I just wanted to give a visual inspection. Now I see, the only thing I noticed looking, uh, right down there on the exhaust manifold, I see a wire that appears to go to the right front speed sensor. Appears to be uh, at least the black poly lume on it is it appears to be melted on the exhaust manifold down there so that we'll have to keep in mind we're not going to touch anything we don't want to touch stuff uh but looking over everything else i don't see anything super obvious uh other than i do see what appears to be bofa down there both those nuts uh looks like possibly a chipmunk or mouse has got some stuff down there uh which could be part of our problem. Um, we'll have to keep that in mind. Like I say, I see mouse stuff if they chewed through wires on a coil. Um, I don't smell the mice. Usually, I've been, you may not have noticed, but I have an abnormally large nose and I can usually smell the mice, in which, in this case, I don't. I'm just curious. I know I said don't touch anything. Uh, let's take and pop, pop off that because that's only one bolt. One bolt there, a bolt from throttle body. Just to have a look, you know, maybe we can just do it without a scan tool. Loosen up that clamp and then we'll take this 10 mil off over here. Have a look. It can't be this easy, but I figured, well, right here, we'll have a peek. I'm not sure what the other shop uh, had done to it or whatever. Um, Either way, they were able to figure what was going on. Oh, there's two screws. Sorry, my bad. There'd only been one if we pulled hard enough. I'm just gonna have a look see. Maybe that uh, stuff they had, the stuff laying here. I just want to see if we see any chewed up wires, and I don't right offhand so. Uh, we're not going to go much further with this here. Just wanted to have a quick look. So it just looks like regular, like hood blanket, hood blanket debris. Yeah, yeah, up here in the upper left hand corner where you can't see. Over here, uh, the hood blanket is chewed up. So uh, hopefully it's just that and a couple, couple nuts, some acorns it looks like. Right there, so. Uh, all right, let's proceed with our normal process, being that we just wasted a bunch of time. We have it the old full system scan. Let's see what the survey says. It says, bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, bank one, lots of oxygen sensor stuff. Uh, heater control circuit, current, heater control circuit, so that's odd two heater control circuits, bank one, uh, sensor one and sensor two. Uh, heater resistance, so this is telling me that there's something wrong with the heater circuit. What's that telling you, huh? Captain Obvious over here. Uh, low frequency throttle actuator performance. Ignition one, switch circuit two. There you go, fella. Um, Steering wheel angle performance, super duper common on Tahoe's or these uh, trailblazers and stuff. 
Rothcom history code class two blah blah blah. So what I'm thinking, we got some heater circuit codes. Uh, so possibly a fuse that runs both of those. Uh, the heater resistance, we'll skip that. Uh, it's a current low frequency throttle actuator performance. Uh, what's concerning though is this one here, ignition one switch circuit two. Uh, because we all know that these ignition switches are very failure prone in these Chevrolets. I think we did one on a black Yukon or Tahoe or Trailblazer, whatever these things are, that you had to doodle chop that sucker to get it running. So I'm curious, because all of this probably happened at once, so why don't we, instead of looking at mass air flows and throttle actuators and all that hoopty, why don't we look at the O2 heater, because that's probably going to be the easiest thing, and see if it's missing power and the power is missing at the fuse box and it happens to come from this ignition switch I'd put you know dollars to donuts of that ignition switch also runs throttle actuator and probably mass airflow which we could probably look which we probably will do looking at a diagram here for us folks uh, fuse 29 4.2 liter runs both oxygen sensors imagine that and so we look up here, it doesn't apply, doesn't apply, doesn't apply, because these are all for 5.3 and 6.0. 5.3, 6.0, 5.3, The other part of this circuit for the 4.2 liter, believe it or not, runs the mass airflow and the PCM. So this is all starting to make sense to us now. ETC fuse, electronic throttle control. So it must be maybe that portion of it in the PCM. Mass airflow, oxygen sensors. We come over here, what do we have? We've got codes for all that hoopty. So just for the heck of it, where does that come from? That comes from this powertrain relay, which has all this other stuff. The power feed to that relay is also the power feed to the horn and the washer and the fog lights. Does the horn work? Because that'll tell us right away whether or not we're dealing with some other kind of something or other. All right, there we go. We just narrowed it down. Possibly narrowed it down. We know that this power source across the top here that feeds this other stuff is good. Maybe we just got a bad powertrain relay. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's first, before we even assume, see if we have power on fuse 29 10 amp, which I'm assuming is in this box. Any nieces? Might be mouse underneath the box. I don't smell them though. No legend. There we go. Where's 29? Do we assume? Let me go get my tripod. Otherwise, I'll give you guys vertigo. Uh, so we're gonna find a good source of a ground. But you see how looking at the codes and Kind of just looking at overall everything it can give you some direction here. So fuse 29 is supposed to be a 10A. 29. Where are we at, little guy? There's 27, 28, and <gasps> no 29. What the frig? Oh, there it is, 29. It's a Lone Ranger over here in between these guys. Oh, let's make sure our test light works. It does. 10 amp fuse. No power. Got power on that guy. Uh, let me make sure the key is on. I believe it is. But let's make sure. Yep, the key is on fully. But I smell, I'm getting a waft of burned up electrical, is what I'm getting a waft of. And uh, definitely have no power on this fuse, so okay. Now we gotta work it, girl. We gotta work it backwards. Just had to go look on a diagram. Should be relay number 57 for the 4.2 litre. And 57 powertrain relay, so that agrees. We're all in agreement. Let's pull this little guy out. I smell it, it doesn't smell funny. Let's see, is number 47 the same? Same part number, so let's swap this. And that one was 
what is that one? That is number 5047. It's a starter relay. We know that one is good. So let's swap it. And then we'll put this one back here and we'll assume the starter still works. See if we have power now. You dirty rat. No, sir. Still no power on that fuse. So we're not dealing with just a bad relay. Um, let's get a diagram. We got to find the ins and outs to that little guy. We'll get us a relay jumper. We'll see are we missing power on the load side, power on the control side. And I'm certain that we're going to be on the hunt. Like Sean Connery was looking for the Red October, we're going to be looking for the broken wire. All right, we got us a relay jumper. So two of these. I don't know, I think, uh, what, 85 and 87, are they supposed to be hot? A uh, couple, two of these should be hot, two of them should not. We got power there. We got power there. So we got both our powers, and when I click it, I, whoops, when I touch, must be, what is it, the control side here, which is terminal 80, something here, 85 perhaps, 85, we hear it click, right? So we hear it turn on. So in theory, let's see, so we have both our powers. So one's a control, one's the load side power, which both come from the same power source according to the diagram. We click it. The relay does turn on. So let me get a second test light here, folks. We'll make sure that this relay can pass power through it, pass current. So technically, if I go on, this terminal here, we turn the relay on, it should light up, and it does, and technically this fuse should turn on then in that case. So I'll probe that into the fuse, and we turn the fuse on. So we have just narrowed down the entire circuit to a single wire, um, which happens to be this, the control wire that turns this on. Because I'm thinking if we go like this, here we start this up, Jay, see if you can give, give it the old Italian tune up there. I don't know if we got a clear codes or not, but just see if it see if you can rev it up. Man, don't tell me to do that. <laughs> it's interesting that it still misfires. Well, uh, only four tunes don't allow you to rev muffler anyway. And I don't think you can get muffler from like two grand. Oh, okay. Here, go ahead, go ahead and shut it off. That's the way they are. Okay. Well. That's part of a problem. The misfire might be another problem. Uh, but we do know that the PCM, if that's what's in control of this powertrain relay, is not turning it on. However, when we turn it on, the rest of the circuit appears to work. Um, let's find out what it takes to turn that on. That was not in the power distribution diagram, so I have no idea. I'm assuming the PCM. So I printed this out the entire diagram here. I think I saw it when I was printing them on page four or five. Here we go. So five of seven. Let's look at this together. So just so we're all on the same page here. Here's our powertrain relay. We know that we have power here and we have power here. So that eliminates that whole half of the circuit. And we know on the control here, so this is what turns relay on, when we ground this, that the relay closes and that this half of the circuit becomes active. You know, our fuse that was dead, fuse 29, uh, ought, you know, becomes hot at that point. So that tells us that these two are good, this is good, you know, we're good to the fuse. Our problem is right here on this yellow wire. So this is all we have to focus on, is this control, does this control work, is the PCM working? That goes back down to number seven. And just like Bob Seeger, let's turn the page. And then number seven down here. Goes all the way across to number 20, and we go back again. That's why you print them all out. Number 20 goes all the way over to number 8. Turn page. Number 8 goes to number 7. <laughs> We're back to where we started. And number 7 goes right here to the PCM. Power train, relay, coil, pin number 38 on connector C1. It's kind of funny, this is just like the stinking Nissan we just did, the PCM <laughs> turns itself on. It's like, you naughty little PCM. <laughs> and uh, that's what it does, that provides power and bada bing bada boom. 
uh, because one of those power feeds comes back to actually turn the PCM on or part of it. Um, that's the best we can do, folks. What we can do, uh, because this is a color diagram and about a 98% chance it's wrong and doesn't show everything, there could be a connector between you know here and where it ends, which we'll need to know if we go to the PCM, we find that wire, we probe it, and if the PCM is ground in that wire, but it's not making it to the box, then we know definitively that, just like the Nissan we just did, we have a broken wire. So let's find that wire. Fortunately for us, the PCM uh, is easy to get to. It lives right here. <coughs> I think what we'll do, <coughs> quick coughing, what we'll do is we'll have a little look-see down there now that we know our potential problem is from here to here. I don't know if on scan data, if we can see the powertrain relay uh, command that might get that might tell us something that's saying, hey, you know, the PCM saying turn on. Uh, so I'm going to look for that briefly, and then we're going to find which connector is the C1. A little more visual, closer visual inspection here, because I do see some broken clips and stuff where this has been fiddled with. And then we'll look, and then if we don't see anything, then we'll find the wire, and then we'll probe it and do what we got to do. So I see, I was just searching for relay, came up starter relay, and then this EC ignition relay feedback signal, uh, this guy up here, it's at zero volts. However, if we turn the relay on like we did, we can now see that it displays 12 volts. Now it's at zero. So that's good. That also tells us that the wire is making it all the way back to the PCM and it can see it. So we've learned a little more. I was hoping to see some sort of relay control of some sort. Now I only went to one minute went the elect electrical theft. Uh, I'm going to poke through a couple other ones um, just to see. Because if I can see that the PCM is actually commanding it on, that would be helpful to us. I don't know if I will, but we're gonna. I'm just going to search some keywords and see if I can find it. If not, we're moving on. My visual inspection didn't reveal anything here, and this is connector C1 right here. Uh, I seen some rub spots on this harness, like right here, you know, where it bends, uh, but I don't see yellow, a yellow wire in there. First of all, this is the only yellow wire I see. Um, the other yellow wire is yellow with a black, and I just don't see any, uh, any signs of any evidence of anybody being here? I'm just kind of curious. We still have our test light here. I just wonder if we can very gingerly. This thing's extremely sharp. Just a second, Jay. Yeah. Oh, you hear that? Oh, that's a good sign. Uh, kind of. <laughs> that's a good sign in the sense that the wire is good from here to there, um, it doesn't look like anything on the PCM's been touched right here. I'm just gonna unplug it uh, because it, all we have left is, you know, eight inches of wire there. I'm just gonna have a look, make sure this connector's not cruddy. The only thing I'm concerned about is what tells the PCM to turn that circuit on? Are we back to our ignition switch code? Um, if that ignition switch circuit, whatever it was, isn't turning on a certain part of the PCM, so the PCM's not turning on that, um, is that where we're at or you know are we at you know a bad PCM PCM's receiving all of its powers and grounds and it's just not turning on this powertrain relay uh, that'd be a real pisser wouldn't it so let's uh, like I say I'm just gonna unplug this if we can just do it right here. You, you're good Jay you can make all the noise you want now um, we're gonna unplug that we're gonna have a good old we're gonna give it a good old fashion let's see here if I can figure out how to unplug it. There we go. Let me shut the key off here real quick. We're just gonna have a little look-see. I'm gonna get a pick or a test light. We're gonna undo that clip. Like I say, we know we're good from there to there. We'll have a little looky. Let me shut the key off. Hold on, folks. Keys off. Uh, make sure we don't have any green crusties down living in here. What's that baby? Looks pretty clean. So it's embarrassing when you got green crusts. Oh yeah. They're the worst. 
Doesn't look like anybody's been here. So that's always good. You always gotta be mindful where people have had their digits, uh, particularly if they're coming from other shops. Ha! <laughs> good thing we looked, you dirtbag. Look at that, I'll be a son of a hooski. What in the sugar? You know what, Jay? That's right where that freaking plastic clamp was. Look okay. at that. Look at that. That wow. freaking poly loom is eight through that wire, that wire. I didn't half expect to find anything here. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's pretty good. No wonder. No wonder it's broke. But look at that crap. The poly loom has left skid marks on several wires here. <laughs> But right here, let's get the glory on the camera because this is always the fun part when we do this. Get out the pinky. Well, is this wire chewed through? No, nope, they just have indents on them. Could be wrong. Are you ready, folks? Here's here's a glorious moment when we get to do this on camera. You ready? One, two. Oh, buckle my shoe. Right there, the glorious finish. I robbed you guys of that on the Nissan video. Uh, I was enjoying myself so much that you didn't get to see the climax of the whole video. Um, that's all right. So that's quite interesting that uh, all these little dings in the insulation here, I'm gonna have to carefully examine these, each one of them, to see if it constitutes cutting any of them to see if we've broke through to the wire because if we are into the wire, then we've obviously got to fix them. Well, obviously, let's fix that one anyways. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mrs. O. So guess, yeah, yeah. guess what I just did. Guess what I just found on a car out there. Broken, Broken wire. wire. Broken wire. Yeah. Oh, you like your new window. Uh, okay. One thing I know how to do, that's treat a lady right. Buy me a window that opens. Look at that. Get out of here, you scumbag! Is that what you yell out of the window? <laughs> <laughs> Only when you walk. Only when I walk? Come on, be nice. <laughs> I don't know, that's a terrible thing to say to anybody. I know, but you know what we should get? We've already talked about this ice cream machine because that's no. a perfect ice Here, sit down at your desk. No. Sit down there for one second. <laughs> pretend, let's pretend. Let's, come on. Get yo, out yo, of here, you dirtbag! Oh, uh, yeah, can I get a large twist, lady? No. Come on, you like role playing, and when I'm being the Carpenter man, no. you don't remember that? Yeah. Yeah, you do. That's not what we're doing. Oh, here. okay. I can't role play and be ice cream guy. Jeez, <laughs> tough crowd. Anyways, the people want to see your window and your new AC unit. No more air conditioner over here. It's gone. The walls are bare. Miss needs to do decorating. And it is it a wacko? Oh. Okay. All right. We love you. Bye bye. Love you yeah. Love you too. Chip chip. We just had to go and tell Mrs. O. Let her know what's up. Strip this little guy back. Like so. We'll stick this in here. We'll get this crimped down. Like so. What's up, Mrs. O? Joe's on the phone. Oh, Joe Baroni. <laughs> Joe Mama. <laughs> I'm all out of Joe jokes. G.I. Joe? That's probably not as funny. Um, I know your husband's blaming you for burning up all the brake cleaner. Yeah, she was using yes. brake clean like it was going out of style. I had to get the paint off my hands. Oh boy. It was epoxy, so it didn't really want to come up. Yeah. I asked what happened and immediately... They were right under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's still on the phone. All right, give me just one he second. He wants to know if you can fix... It's got a nail in this left rear tire. I can't. Local Joe. Jason can. Okay. Any particular time better? Any particular time better for you, Jay? <laughs> hey, I'm paid by the hour. Huh? He's paid by the hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets paid either way. Yeah. Tell him that Jason will do it on his lunch break, show up at noon. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said anytime. His word's not mine. Anytime afternoon. Uh, so there we are, folks. It is crimped. It is heat shrinked. It is glued. Uh, been a lot of questions on the SMA channel and some hatred for using these uh, crimp and steel style connectors to the point I've gotten multiple uh, emails and, and notices or whatever, you know, comments I should say. Uh, people really commenting on these, tell me it makes them throw up in their mouth when I use these. And one guy says that he's disgusted 
with my ability to fix cars and then to do a completely shitty repair uh, like this. However, uh, it's a good mechanical crimp. The wires are crimped together. Uh, the sod, it's not soldered, it's not gonna crack, anything like that. And then these heat shrinks, as long as you crimp them correctly and you don't use the pointed part of your crimping tool for non-insulated connectors, you use the insulated connector part, so that's that round part in there. As long as you crimp it and you don't poke through the skin or the outer membrane of the crimp and you heat shrink it, these ones have the adhesive in them that squirts out the end, completely seals it. I don't see a problem with it. It's good, it's strong, it's a tight connection. Uh, we don't have to worry about the solder cracking underneath them, which I've had problems with the solder and heat shrink ones in the past, and I've mentioned that, and that's why I tend not to use them, because I got burned by them big time many, many years ago. So, that's that. I do see some other wires here that I'm going to go through and fix, where I believe it is through the insulation and into the metal. I'm going to go through, like I say, and really scrutinize each one of them, where I can see the little ding-dongs on them. However, prior to doing that, this ding dong is going to plug it back in. We're going to clear the code, start it up, see if it's fixed. If not, we're going to keep trucking. So I just wanted to clarify that, folks. Just in case, you know, you're home, you, you're, you're having fun, you're like, oh, SMA, and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, you're in the bathroom throwing up because you just seen how I, how I did that. Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring some closure or at least get us all on the same page. Uh, do what you feel is necessary. Do not do as I do, as they say. Um, something like that. My mom used to tell me things like that. She, she, always, she used to say, like, think before you speak, or uh, wipe that grin off your face before I wipe it off for you. You know, things like that. What else did she say? She used to be beating my ass with a wooden spoon, and I'd be laughing and laughing. She'd say, I may, you might be bigger than me, but I'm still your mother. And I'd be laughing and then wait till your father gets home. You're like, you knew at that point you were screwed. Uh, that's all I remember. Because no matter how nice you were to your mom the whole rest of the day, come dinner time, Pop got home. Man, she never forgot. Dang it, you'd be just about done with dinner. And then they bring it up. But now as an adult, I understand. Um, anyways, let's move on. Doo -dee -doo. Key on engine, huh? 202,000, wow. It starts, it runs. It's not skipping anymore. Oh baby, listen to that. Oh. Wow. A lot of smoke coming out of the back there. It smelled like wicked rich when I brought it in. It had quite a fog. Maybe we're just cleaning her out. Yeah, no more smoke there. Oh wow, it smells super rich. Woo! <laughs> it stank. Yeah. Alright, well that's good. I think we fixed it. Oh, it was Fire it up here. We want to take it for a little shake before we give it back to the other shop, and then we're gonna rescan the system uh, because we went through wipe the coats out of everything. Obviously, you guys saw that, but we want to go drive it, make sure it runs good. I'm certain that we have it all taken care of. Now I did button up the air cleaner, put the bolts back in that, tightened up the hose clamp. Uh, fixed a couple more of the wires in that harness and then as a precaution before I taped it I sprayed it with a little fluid film in case there was a little prick there that we missed got an awful lot of cards here today plus I got some others parked up town here I guess we're gonna have to get busy get something done let's go see got power hey what's going on here at the bank oh they're doing some uh, ceiling some parking lot ceiling at the legion
I'm not sure why it had the misfire, but sometimes I don't get too excited about stuff. You just wonder and think like, I wonder why that was misfire. Who knows? Who knows? Was a successful test drive folks uh, everything seemed to go well uh, rerunning a full system scan letting it do its thing uh, appears everything's showing up green I don't really see it necessary to go through and run a full drive cycle on this because it wasn't brought here for an engine light uh, I was brought here because it run like poo that seems to be resolved I'm happy with our repair we can call the other shop now they can do what they got to do uh, get this thing back to their customer and have uh, a five-star review on the Google and we'll leave it at that why don't you go down there and give us a five-star review on the Google and while you're down there doing that click on the comments leave a comment the questions the criticisms leave it all Facebook the insty and just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching